Imagine that one afternoon you're in the backyard with your seven-year-old daughter helping her with her gymnastics routine. Your other kids are out playing in the backyard somewhere, and after a little bit you realize that you haven't heard from your three-year-old son. And you drop what you're doing, you go look around for him, you see the pool to your backyard, you see the gate is still closed, and yet somehow you see his body floating in the pool. You run over, you pull him out, you pray to God to revive him, you call 911, you do CPR, they arrive, they take him to the hospital, and a day later he's gone. How do you move on from that? How do you heal from that? What does that look like? That's the story of Granger Smith and this new book, Like a River. It's the story of his healing from the loss of his three-year-old son, River. And this book is wonderful, you guys. Um, I picked it up the day that it came out. <clears throat> I followed Granger for a couple of years, never like super closely, but I kind of always kind of kept an eye on his music, listened to some of his songs, really liked them had kind of fallen off in the past couple of years. And so I pretty much essentially missed this whole portion of their story and uh, just happened to see that the book was coming out, read the synopsis, was like, oh my gosh, I need to check this out. And I'm so glad that I did. This book will break your heart <laughs> um, and put it back together again. It is a horrifically, unimaginably sad story. And I love that Granger does not pull any punches um, in the very first chapter is about the drowning and he doesn't he doesn't put it off he doesn't wait for it he doesn't you know kind of like all oh, build up to it or whatever it's just like boom this is what happened this is what changed everything in our life we're just going to address the elephant in the room right now and it was so hard to listen to um, and just to imagine that happening uh, like a week before we had been in Wisconsin <clears throat> and all of my kids were down on the boat with some friends and my three-year-old had actually fallen in the lake and he fell under the dock and so his his grandpa and I went, went running down there and we jumped in and he was okay he was actually able to stand underneath it where it was um, but this was just like a week before listening to this book and so it was just it was hit really close to home I did drown when I was 13 um, so that's a thing and yeah, it was just, it was very, very difficult to read that portion of it. Um, but <clears throat> it was fascinating to go through and hear the progression of Granger's story from really, I think the most fascinating thing to me was starting to work through it and seeming like, oh, all the self-help things were working and like all the things that I had done before were working. I'm just going to double down on all the, on all the self-help things that I already know to do. And even though I'm exactly like Granger, sorry, there's a gnat flying around here, that's weird. Um, but even though I'm exactly like Granger, very much into the self-help thing and into the creating good morning routines and doing all these things and whatever, um, just the realization that at a certain point, there's things that happen that the answer is not ever going to be found inside of you. It's not gonna be found in working harder. It's not gonna be found in optimizing stuff better and whatever, whatever. There's, there's literally stuff that the only answer in all of it is Jesus. And the, to see the progression of Granger go from trying to find the answer all outside of all this stuff to getting to this place in the chapter that he called Dark Night of the Soul where he almost commits suicide um, is really, really eye-opening and heartbreaking and just uh, convicting. I would say, because it's one of those things that you're like, ah, man, if there I go, but for the grace of God, there, but for the grace of God, go I. That's, that's exactly what that is, is none, none of us are immune to this kind of reaction when something that terrible happens. Um, so <clears throat> anyways, yeah, so he, he kind of goes through this, this process of getting all the way down to this dark night of the soul and then Jesus literally coming in and radically changing his whole entire life. And the, the, the best worst part of the story for me with that was as soon as this starts to happen, it's like, oh, God's changing all this stuff in our life and all this stuff is amazing. And now we're about to have another kid, then tragedy strikes again. And that just hit me so hard in my, my own story and my own 
the understanding of life and just feeling like I'm the only one that's like, oh, as soon as like God's going to move, then it's like, bam, you know, and you're like, oh, that only happens to me. And it doesn't. It happens to everyone. Um, but to read the the response of him and his wife and how they dealt with a tragedy stacked on top of a tragedy, but coming from a new, firmer foundation um, is it's really, really beautiful and really, really encouraging. And overall, this is one of those books that I came out of it going, holy crap, that's the kind of relationship I want with Jesus. Like, that's how much I want God to change my life. Like, that's the reason that that I read books like this. And that's the reason that I, I'm constantly searching to find books is because they inspire me to go to higher levels in, in any of those things, in the courage, strength, mastery, and, uh, and honor, it's, it's just this thing of like, when you can read this story of somebody who's gone through something that terrible, that comparatively, when you look at what you've gone through is like nothing, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh my gosh, like I haven't even, good night, dude. <laughs> like, I thought of my stuff's all bad, you know, I'm like, I haven't come anywhere close to anything like this. Um, and when you can read their story and the way that God has worked in their life to renew and encourage them through it, it it gives you something to live up to and it gives you something to aspire to and it gives you an example be like man that's what i want and then the next time that something terrible or something scary or something you know just whatever hits in your life it gives you this example to live up to this is why i love reading stories especially real stories um but even even a ton of, of made up stories they don't have to be you don't have to be real you know to be be effective like that but it is there is something special to be able to sit there and look at whatever it is that you're going through and be like, man, but this guy went through this, which was so much worse. And Jesus radically changed his life because of it. And God's working all this stuff in his life because of it. I wonder what God can work in my life with what's going on right now. Um, so yeah, I, I dude, I would, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this book, especially if you're going through any kind of a grief, any kind of a loss. Um, and you're, you're at the point where you're wanting to start to work through it. One of the things that they say, the, I would get the audiobook. There's a there's an interview at the end of the audiobook with him and his wife that was super great, and it's not in the actual book. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that they said in there was like, "How do you comfort people that have that have just lost and whatever?" And they were <laughs> one of the things that they said was like, "If it's the day of, you don't. Like if it's too soon, you don't. So if it's too soon, you know that it's too soon, and that's not the point." that you need a, a book like this. But if, if something has happened and you're dealing with anything where this is, there is grief, there is loss, there is heartache, there is pain, there's something that you're trying to move through and you're trying to find a way through it, I would highly, highly recommend this book. It was absolutely, absolutely wonderful. A couple of my favorite quotes from it that I just wanna throw out there in this video um, was he said, pain is not permanent and pain is not pointless, which I absolutely loved. Um, he said, it is a grim miscalculation to think that calm waters are a result of our oars and paddle technique. In reality, they are dictated by the source of the river. So I was like, oh my gosh. Um, instead of crying out, why God? I've changed the question to what God? What are you trying to show me through this trial? Which completely lines up with Jamie Winship, all the identity stuff from Living Fearless that I've been learning. Instead of asking why, we ask, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to know? What are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to know? And we go from not being able to hear anything, not being able to discern anything about what God's trying to say, to very clearly hearing an answer like that just as soon as we change the question. Because we're asking the wrong question. We're asking why. <clears throat> and the answer to the question why is not even something that we can comprehend. So God can't give us an answer. He's like, well, like I would love to tell you, but you literally can't understand it. So I can't, t there's no point in me trying to explain it to you because it's impossible for you to understand. And so you need to ask a question that I can give you an answer to. And the question that he can give an answer to is, what? What do you need me to know? What are you trying to teach me? What, what, are, what, are, you, what, are, what are you doing in this situation? Um, and there's purpose on the other side of surrender was another one of my favorite quotes. And then just big one at the end, kind of, kind of just this little snippet in one sentence that he said, but he said, other than the things that I know I'm supposed to do right now, essentially, he said, my future is none of my business. And, oh man, with some stuff that's happening in my life right now, I was like, holy cow, like that is, whew, that is a thing. 
My future is none of my business other than doing what I know I'm supposed to do and what God told me to do right now, today, this day. My future is none of my business. It's up to him. He has it. He has the plan. He knows what he's doing. And if I submit and follow his lead, it will work out. And it's none of my business how it's supposed to work out or what it's going to do. Um, so yeah, I love that. Like a River by Granger Smith. Highly recommend this book. Get the audio book. has a wonderful additional conversation in it. And uh, yeah, it's a book that's well worth well worth sharing and spreading around. So uh, if you guys read it, let me know. Leave me a comment. And yeah, like, subscribe, all the things. You know what to do. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.